Question 1. Who is responsible for managing health and safety on site? Give one answer. A. Building inspector. B. Contracts manager. C. Health and safety executive, HSE. D. Site manager. D. Is the correct answer. Question 2. General site rules would not normally include information about which one of the following? Give one answer. A. Names and addresses of workers. B. Near miss and accident reporting. C. Personal protective equipment, PPE. D. Site induction procedures. A is the correct answer. Question 3. If someone is injured on site, where should this be recorded? Give one answer. A. In an accident book or record. B. In the method of work. C. On the safe system of work plan. D. On the site plan. is the correct answer. Question 4. If you have a minor accident, who should report it? Give one answer. A. Anyone who saw the accident. B. The Health and Safety Executive, HSE. C. The Subcontractor. D. U. If possible. D. Is the correct answer. Question 5. Does your employer have to provide a first aid kit? Give one answer. A. No, there is no legal duty to provide one. B. Only if more than 25 people work on site. C. Only if more than 50 people work on site. D. Yes, every site must have one. D is the correct answer. Question 6. What is the main risk to this worker, wearing only these items of personal protective equipment, PPE? Give one answer. A. Breathing in harmful dust. B. Damage to hearing. C. Dermatitis to skin. D. Eye injuries. D is the correct answer. Question 7. This label is shown on the container of a liquid that a worker is using on site. What does it mean? Give one answer. A. It can be used to feed plants and fish. B. It could cause a drought. C. It is harmful to the environment. D. It will only cause death to fish. C. Is the correct answer. Question 8. Under environmental law, which of the following statements is true? Give one answer. A. Companies and employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. B. Only companies can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. C. Only directors can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. D. Only employees can be prosecuted if they do not follow the law. A. Is the correct answer. Question 9. What should be done if there is an oil or diesel spill on site? Give one answer. A. Call the environment agency immediately so they can arrange to have it cleaned up. B. Ignore it. Oil or diesel spills do not have serious long-term effects. C. Stop work, contain the spill, notify the supervisor and then clean up the spill. D. Use a spill kit to clean it up before the end of the day. C. Is the correct answer. Question 10. You discover a bird on a nest where you need to work. 
What should you do? Give one answer. A. Cover it with a sheet so it can be moved out of the way before starting work. B. Move it to a place of safety, carry out your work and then put it back. C. Protect it from further disturbance, make others aware and inform your supervisor. D. Scare it away by making loud noises, then carry on with your work. C. Is the correct answer. Question 11. Why is it bad practice to store heavy materials underneath a tree? Give one answer. A. Compaction of the soil could damage the tree roots. B. Materials are not protected from the tree sap. C. Mold could grow on the stored materials. D. The tree branches could get damaged. A. Is the correct answer. Question 12. You have been asked to do some work that will create dust. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Start the work. No controls are needed as dust cannot cause serious harm or injury. B. Use equipment to eliminate or reduce the dust and wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. C. Work for short periods at a time. Regular breaks will reduce the amount of dust you breathe in. D. You should not do the work because dust is highly dangerous. B. Is the correct answer. Question 13. Where are you likely to be exposed to the highest quantities of dust when drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding? Give one answer. A. Inside a large space. B. Inside a small room. C. Outside on a still day. D. Outside on a windy day. B. Is the correct answer. Question 14. Who can enter a confined space? Give one answer. A. Anyone who has completed an apprenticeship. B. Anyone who is trained, competent and authorized. C. Only competent machine drivers who have the correct license. D. Only site managers and supervisors of the company. B. Is the correct answer. What can cause occupational asthma? Give one answer. A. Breathing in hazardous dust, fumes, or vapors. B. Exposure to loud noise on a regular basis. C. Exposure to rat urine whilst working. D. Skin contact with any hazardous substance. A. Is the correct answer. Question 16. The seal of your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, can be broken by which two things? Give two answers. A. A hearing aid. B. Earrings. C. Facial hair. D. Facial scarring. E. Makeup. C. And D. Is the correct answer. Question 17. If your respiratory protective equipment, RPE, is a bad fit, which one of the following is most likely to happen? Give one answer. A. It will break easily. B. It will filter more air. C. It will get damaged. D. It will not protect you. D. Is the correct answer. Question 18. How often is it good practice to carry out repeat face fit tests for respiratory protective equipment, RPE? Give one answer. A. On a regular basis. B. On an ad hoc basis. C. When starting a new shift pattern. D. When starting work on a different site. A. 
is the correct answer. Question 19. What should you do if you run out of the water you are using to control dust? Give one answer. A. Ask everyone to clear the area and then carry on. B. Carry on but get someone to sweep up afterwards. C. Put on additional respiratory protection. D. Stop and refill the water. D. Is the correct answer. Question 20. Your doctor tells you that you have hand arm vibration syndrome, HAVS, possibly caused through work. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Inform your supervisor or employer. B. Only inform your friends at work. C. Tell no one, as HAVS is not reportable. D. Tell no one, as it's not contagious. A. Is the correct answer. Question 21. What should you do if you need to wear ear defenders but an ear pad is missing from one of the shells? Give one answer. A. Do not work in noisy areas until they are replaced. B. Leave them off and work without any hearing protection. C. Put them on and work with them as they are. D. Take an ear pad from another set of ear defenders. A. Is the correct answer. Question 22. What are two ways of reducing the risk of transferring hazardous substances from your hands to your mouth? Give two answers. A. Putting barrier cream on your hands before eating. B. Using barrier cream for working activities. C. Washing protective gloves before each use. D. Washing your hands before eating. E. Wearing protective gloves while you are working. D. And E is the correct answer. Question 23. When referring to protection, what is a high UV rate cream designed to protect you from? Give one answer. A. Abrasions. B. Dermatitis. C. Legionella. D. Sunburn. D. Is the correct answer. Question 24. What is the most likely source of hepatitis in this image? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. A. Is the correct answer. Question 25. What other illness can be easily confused with the early signs of Wiles disease, leptospirosis? Give one answer. A. Dermatitis. B. Diabetes. C. Hay fever. D. Influenza, flu. D. Is the correct answer. Question 26. Who has a duty to protect an individual from stress at work? Give one answer. A. The employer. B. The government. C. The local authority. D. The union. A. Is the correct answer. Question 27. Which one of the following statements is true? Give one answer. A. Learning difficulties and mental health problems are the same. B. Mental health problems are common and can happen to anyone. C. Mental health problems are rare among construction workers. D. People experiencing mental health problems tend to be violent or dangerous. B. Is the correct answer. Question 28. When absorption granules from a spill kit have been used on oil, what action should be taken? Give one answer. A. 
clear them up and place them in a sealed waste bag ready for specialist disposal. B. Clear them up straight away and put them into a general waste skip. C. Leave them on the oil for a few days before clearing into the general waste. D. Use water to help clean up excess oil before specialist disposal. A. Is the correct answer. Question 29. When should an oil spill be cleaned up? Give one answer. A. At the end of the shift. B. Immediately, it could cause someone to slip. C. Never, it will be absorbed into the ground. D. When it has dried. B. Is the correct answer. Question 30. The ground has become muddy on site. What could be done to prevent the ground becoming slippery? Give one answer. A. Improve lighting. B. Improve signage. C. Treat the surface with gravel. D. Treat the surface with salt. C. Is the correct answer. Question 31. What can help to reduce fatigue? Give one answer. A. Drinking alcohol after work. B. Eating larger meals during break times. C. Going to the gym less. D. Taking regular breaks at work. D. Is the correct answer. Question 32. Loan workers are most at risk from what? Give one answer. A. Humiliation. B. Paranoia. C. Sleeplessness. D. Violence. D. Is the correct answer. Question 33. Who should drive company vehicles? Give one answer. A. Any construction site manager or supervisor. B. Any employee who is competent and authorized. C. Any junior apprentice workers. D. Anyone with a learner driver permit. B. Is the correct answer. Question 34. If you have to move a load while you are sitting down, how much can you lift safely? Give one answer. A. Less than the usual amount. B. The usual amount. C. Three times the usual amount. D. Twice the usual amount. A. Is the correct answer. Question 35. Which three of the following factors must you think about to lift a load safely? Give three answers. A. How to grip or hold it firmly. B. Its size and shape. C. Its weight. D. What the value of it is. E. Whether the contents are insured. A. B. C. Is the correct answer. Question 36. Which one of the following could cause back and musculoskeletal problems for a worker? Give one answer. A. Good planning to reduce lifting heavy loads. B. Positioning materials away from the work area. C. Reducing the maximum lifting weight. D. Using machines for lifting operations whenever possible. B. Is the correct answer. Question 37. A large fire has been reported. You have not been trained to use fire extinguishers. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Go straight to the assembly point. B. Leave work for the day. C. Put away all your tools and then go to the assembly point. D. Report to the site office and then go home. A. 
is the correct answer. Question 38. Which emergency procedures should be explained in the site induction? Give three answers. A. How to avoid leaving site in case it's a false alarm. B. How to raise the alarm in case of an emergency. C. What to do if someone is injured on site. D. Where to go if the fire alarm is activated. E. Where to go to leave valuables in an emergency. B. C. D. Is the correct answer. Question 39. If a fire occurs, how should you interact with the designated fire warden? Give one answer. A. Follow the instructions given by the fire warden. B. Follow the site manager as they will know their way around the site. C. Ignore the fire warden and follow your colleagues. D. Ignore the fire warden and the site manager. A. Is the correct answer. Question 40. What does it mean if there is frost around the valve on a liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, cylinder? Give one answer. A. The cylinder is full. B. The cylinder is nearly empty. C. The valve is leaking. D. You must lay the cylinder on its side. C. Is the correct answer. Question 41. You have been asked to dig to expose power cables. You have been given a cable avoidance tool, CAT, to detect them but you haven't been shown how to use it. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask a colleague to show you how to use it. B. Dig the hole without using the cable avoidance tool. C. Read the manual before you start work. D. Tell your supervisor that you haven't been trained. D. Is the correct answer. Question 42. Where vehicles tip materials into excavations, what could be used as a safety precaution? Give one answer. A. A siren. B. Extra speakers. C. Flashing lights. D. Stop blocks. D. Is the correct answer. Question 43. An excavator has just stopped work. Liquid is dripping and forming a small pool under the back of the machine. What could this mean? Give one answer. A. It is normal for fluids to vent after the machine stops. B. Someone put too much diesel into the machine before it started work. C. The machine has a leak and could be unsafe. D. The machine is hot so the diesel has expanded and overflowed. C. Is the correct answer. Question 44. To reduce the risk of overturning and accidents when not in use, how should earth-moving vehicles be parked? Give one answer. A. With the buckets and blades facing opposite directions. B. With their buckets and blades facing the same way. C. With their buckets and blades lowered to the ground. D. With their buckets and blades raised in the air. C. Is the correct answer. Question 45. According to the work at height regulations, when can ladders be used for work? Give one answer. A. A ladder must never be used on site. B. If it is high risk work for long periods of time. C. If it is low risk work for a short period of time. D. When other people do not need to use it for access. C. Is the correct answer. Question 46. Which of these statements is true about using a ladder to access a scaffold platform? 
Give one answer. A. All broken rungs must be clearly marked. B. It must be secured, and extend at least one meter above the platform. C. It must be wedged at the bottom to stop it slipping. D. Two people must be on the ladder at all times. B. Is the correct answer. Question 47. What is the correct way to reach the working platform of a mobile access tower? Give one answer. A. Climb up the ladder built into the tower. B. Climb up the outside of the diagonal bracing. C. Climb up the tower frame on the outside of the tower. D. Lean a ladder against the tower and climb up that. A. Is the correct answer. Question 48. Which one of the following statements is true when referring to the wheels on mobile access towers? Give one answer. A. The wheels should be locked at all times. B. The wheels should be locked when the tower is being moved. C. The wheels should be locked when the tower is in use. D. The wheels should only be locked at the end of the day. C. Is the correct answer. Question 49. When working at height in a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, over or near to deep water, which item of personal protective equipment, PPE, should be worn? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. B. Is the correct answer. Question 50. A worker has been asked to operate a mobile elevating work platform, MEWP, but has no training. What should they do? Give one answer. A. Ask a workmate how to operate the MEWP. B. Get the work done as quickly as possible. C. Operate the MEWP at break time when no one is around. D. Tell their supervisor that they have no training. D. Is the correct answer. Question 51. The whole site has been issued with a prohibition notice. What does this mean? Give one answer. A. Continue with site work. B. Do not use any power tools. C. Finish the job and go home. D. Stop work because the site is unsafe. Correct answer is D. Question 52. After watching you work, a health and safety executive, HSE, inspector issues an improvement notice. What does this mean? Give one answer. A. You are not working fast enough. B. You are not working in a safe way. C. You need to improve the standard of your work. D. Your work has improved since the last visit. Correct answer is B. Question 53. You have witnessed a serious accident on your site and are to be interviewed by a health and safety executive, HSE, inspector. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask other workers what you should tell the inspector. B. Ask your supervisor what you should tell the inspector. C. Cooperate and tell the inspector exactly what you saw. D. Not tell the inspector anything, and ask them to talk to your supervisor. Correct answer is C. Question 54. If you notice that a design detail can't be built in the way it has been drawn in the plans, what two things should you do? Give two answers. A. Build it as you think it should be done. B. Keep quiet as it will mean more work for you. C. Leave that detail out altogether. D. Only make the changes when they are approved in writing. E. 
raise the issue with your supervisor before you start work. Correct answer is D and E. Question 55. When workers arrive on site what is the first thing they should do? Give one answer. A. Enter the site by the easiest route and start work. B. Get their tools out of the store and start work. C. Make sure that the site team knows they are there. D. Walk around the site to inspect the work from the day before. Correct answer is C. Question 56. If a worker fails to report a near miss, what could happen? Give one answer. A. The company could go out of business through neglect. B. The employee could get a large fine. C. The near miss could be a serious accident next time. D. The site manager will be sacked immediately. Correct answer is C. Question 57. What are two possible consequences for you if your employer does not prevent accidents and ill health at work? Give two answers. A. You may not be able to work, which would affect your income and family life. B. You may suffer an injury, affecting your health and well-being. C. You will have to work longer hours to earn more money. D. You will have worse welfare facilities on site while improvements are made. E. You won't get the training required to continue working on site. Correct answer is A and B. Question 58. What are two possible consequences for employers of not taking measures to prevent accidents and ill health at work? Give two answers. A. They could be fined or imprisoned. B. They will damage the environment. C. They will have to change the site layout for emergency vehicles. D. They will lose time and money due to the cost of any accident or ill health. E. They will need to employ more people. Correct answer is A and D. Question 59. What does the word hazard mean? Give one answer. A. A type of removable barrier or machine guard. B. Anything that could cause harm. C. The construction site accident rate. D. The likelihood of something happening. Correct answer is B. Question 60. What is the main reason for understanding the fire and emergency procedures on site? Give one answer. A. To help you to get time off work in an emergency. B. To know what tools and equipment can be used during an emergency. C. To know where the fire exits and assembly point are in an emergency. D. To stop anyone leaving site in an emergency. Correct answer is C. Question 61. Who is responsible for managing health and safety on site? Give one answer. A. Building inspector. B. Contracts manager. C. Health and safety executive, HSE. D. Site manager. Correct answer is D. Question 62. Why is it the employer's legal responsibility to discuss matters of health and safety with employees? Give one answer. A. So that employees are informed of things that will protect their health and safety. B. So that employees do not have any responsibilities for health and safety. C. So that employees will never have to attend any other health and safety training. D. So that your employer will not have any legal responsibility for employees' health and safety. Correct answer is A. Question 63. General site rules would not normally include information about which one of the following? Give one answer. A. 
Names and addresses of workers. B. Near miss and accident reporting. C. Personal protective equipment, PPE. D. Site induction procedures. Correct answer is A. Question 64. If someone is injured on site, where should this be recorded? Give one answer. A. In an accident book or record. B. In the method of work. C. On the safe system of work plan. D. On the site plan. Correct answer is A. Question 65. What should all risk assessments identify? Give one answer. A. How to report accidents. B. The Health and Safety Executive, HSE. C. The Employer. D. The Hazards in the Work Environment. Correct answer is D. Question 66. When creating a risk assessment the severity of harm is multiplied by what? Give one answer. A. The area of the construction site. B. The cost of injury or harm. C. The likelihood of harm occurring. D. The number of workers on site. Correct answer is C. Question 67. Which two topics should be covered in a site induction? Give two answers. A. Holiday entitlement. B. Local amenities. C. Local transportation links. D. Site emergency procedures. E. Site rules. Correct answer is D and E. Question 68. How would you expect to find out about health and safety rules when you first arrive on site? Give one answer. A. By asking other workers to show you around. B. By reading the health and safety policy. C. During the induction. D. In a letter sent to your home. Correct answer is C. Question 69. What is a toolbox talk? Give one answer. A. A sales talk given by a tool supplier. B. A short training session on a particular safety topic. C. A talk that tells you where to buy tools. D. Your first training session when you arrive on site. Correct answer is B. Question 70. What is the main reason for attending a site induction? Give one answer. A. Permits to work will be written and handed out. B. Site rules and hazards will be explained. C. To create the method statements for the site. D. To get to know other new employees. Correct answer is B. Question 71. What should you do if the safety rules given in your site induction seem out of date as work progresses? Give one answer. A. Make up your own safety rules to suit the changing conditions. B. Nothing, as safety is the site manager's responsibility. C. Speak to your supervisor about your concerns. D. Speak to your workmates to see if they have any new rules. Correct answer is C. Question 72. During the site induction you do not understand something the presenter says. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Ask the presenter to explain it again. B. Attend another site induction. C. Guess what the presenter was saying. D. Wait until the end then ask someone else to explain. Correct answer is A. Question 73. Employers must provide workers with instructions that meet which requirement? Give one answer. A. 
Available in audio. B. Downloadable from the internet. C. In a format each worker understands. D. Written in large print. Correct answer is C. Question 74. A worker finds a way of working that is quicker than the method statement they have been given. What should they do? Give one answer. A. Continue to follow the safe system of work for the task. B. Get more work done so they can earn more money. C. Get their work done more quickly so they can leave early. D. Inform work colleagues so they can work this way. Correct answer is A. Question 75. Who should you speak to if the work of another contractor is affecting your safety? Give one answer. A. The contractor. B. The contractor's supervisor. C. Your supervisor. D. Your workmates. Correct answer is C. Question 76. What should you do if you cannot do a job in the way described in the method statement? Give one answer. A. Ask other workers how they think it should be done. B. Contact the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. C. Do not start work until you have talked to your supervisor. D. Make up a better way to do it and carry on. Correct answer is C. Question 77. What should a worker do if the helmet they are using is damaged? Give one answer. A. Put a sticker over the damaged area. B. Replace it immediately. C. Report it at the end of the day. D. Use it but keep checking it. Correct answer is B. Question 78. What should be done in the event of an emergency on site? Give one answer. A. Collect your personal items and leave the site. B. Follow the site emergency procedure. C. Leave the site by the nearest exit and return home. D. Phone the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, for advice. Correct answer is B. Question 79. Which two of the following will help you to find out about the site emergency procedures and emergency telephone numbers? Give two answers. A. Attending the site induction. B. Guidance from the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, website. C. Guidance from your local job center. D. Looking in the telephone directory. E. Reading the site notice boards. Correct answer is A and E. Question 80. How should you be informed about what to do in an emergency? Give two answers. A. By asking the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. B. By looking in the Health and Safety file. C. By asking at the local hospital. D. By attending the site induction. E. By reading the site notice boards. Correct answer is D and E. Question 81. What two things should you do if there is an emergency situation on site? Give two answers. A. Collect personal items from the site office. B. Finish what you are doing. C. Go to the designated assembly point. D. Leave the area via the nearest exit. E. Look for other people who may not know what to do. Correct answer is C and D. Question 82. What information should be gathered after a near-miss incident occurs? Give one answer. A. The activities that were being carried out at the time. B. The cost of the project at the time of the incident. C. 
The names of next of kin for the people involved. D. Where those involved lived at the time of the incident. Correct answer is A. Question 83. You witness a serious accident on site. What immediate action should you take? Give two answers. A. Call out to other workers so they can call for help. B. Check if it is safe to approach the injured person. C. Lift the injured person and take them to the site office. D. Record the date and time in the incident book. E. Sit the injured person up and give them food and water. Correct answer is A and B. Question 84. What should not be in a first aid kit? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. Correct answer is D. Question 85. Does your employer have to provide a first aid kit? Give one answer. A. No, there is no legal duty to provide one. B. Only if more than 25 people work on site. C. Only if more than 50 people work on site. D. Yes, every site must have one. Correct answer is D. Question 86. If the first aid kit on site is empty, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Bring your own first aid supplies into work. B. Find out who is taking all the first aid supplies. C. Ignore the problem as it is always the same. D. Inform the person who looks after the first aid kit. Correct answer is D. Question 87. What is the one thing a first aider cannot do? Give one answer. A. Give mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. B. Give you medicines without authorization. C. Stop any bleeding. D. Treat you if you are unconscious. Correct answer is B. Question 88. Evacuation routes should be, give one answer. A. Clear and unobstructed. B. Lit at all times of the day. C. Painted bright green. D. Used as assembly points. Correct answer is A. Question 89. If you find an injured person and you are on your own, what should you do first? Give one answer. A. Ask the injured person what happened, and then find your supervisor. B. Assess the situation, do not put yourself in danger. C. Inform your supervisor that someone has been injured. D. Move the injured person to a safe place, and then find your supervisor. Correct answer is B. Question 90. Someone working in a deep inspection chamber has collapsed. What should you do first? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to find your supervisor while you try to rescue the worker. B. Climb into the inspection chamber and give first aid treatment. C. Get someone to lower you into the inspection chamber on a rope. D. Raise the alarm and stay by the inspection chamber, but do not enter. Correct answer is D. Question 91. Someone is knocked unconscious and you are not trained in first aid. What should you do first? Give one answer. A. Give them mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. B. Send for medical help. C. Slap their face to wake them up. D. Turn them over so that they are lying on their back. Correct answer is B. Question 92. Someone has fallen from height and has no feeling in their legs. What should you do? Give one answer. A. 
Keep their legs straight and roll them onto their back. B. Keep them still until medical help arrives. C. Raise their legs to see if any feeling comes back. D. Roll them onto their side and bend their legs. Correct answer is B. Question 93. Someone collapses with stomach pain and there is no first aider on site. What should you do first? Give one answer. A. Ask someone to call the emergency services. B. Ask them to sit down. C. Get them to take some painkillers. D. Help them to lie down in the recovery position. Correct answer is A. Question 94. If you think that someone has broken their leg, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Place them on their back. B. Place them on their side in the recovery position. C. Send for the first aider or get other help. D. Use your belt to strap their legs together. Correct answer is C. Question 95. If you cut your finger and it won't stop bleeding, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Find a first aider or get other medical help. B. Tell your colleagues because you may need to rest. C. Wash it, then carry on working. D. Wrap something around it and carry on working. Correct answer is A. Question 96. If there is an emergency while you are on site, what should you do first? Give one answer. A. Follow the site emergency procedure. B. Leave the site and go home. C. Phone home and then leave the site. D. Phone the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. Correct answer is A. Question 97. If someone is in contact E with a live cable, what should you do first? Give one answer. A. Dial 999 and ask for an ambulance. B. Isolate the power and call for help. C. Phone the electricity company. D. Pull them away from the cable. Correct.